In the 1960s, an obscure sports car roared onto the market that would become an underground success for the British motor industry, the Reliance Scimitar. Its striking name and beautiful styling being the product of a company that had, to that point, built its name upon the creation of the notorious Regal and Robin three-wheelers that were now the pride of the working classes. Essentially, what would become the Reliant Scimitar started in the 1950s in Israel, when the Reliant company helped to establish a Haifa-based subsidiary called Autocars Limited, which built, under license, three-wheeled Reliant Regals before introducing the Reliant Regent van, while the company's first dedicated model was the Susita family car, which was built using Ford Anglia underpinnings and would become Israel's best-selling model, being sold as a saloon, an estate car, a van, and a pickup truck. In 1960, Autocars launched the Sabra, its name being derived from the Hebrew term for any Jewish person born within the state of Israel, and was a low-slung sports car variant of the Susita that had been launched at the New York Trade Fair, with so much enthusiasm leveled at the model that firm orders for 600 units had been made by the end of that day, and in response to the car's phenomenal success, Autocars managing director, Ishtak Shabinsky, decided to capitalise on this through the provision of a coupe variant based on the moulds of a British sports car called the Ashley GT, for which Autocars, with Reliant money, had bought the manufacturing rights, while Reliant was tasked with re-engineering the model for the American market. The result was the Sabra Sport, which made its debut at the 1961 New York Motor Show, being sold initially as a drop-top roadster, before being made available later as a fastback coupe with Reliant building the first 100 units at their Tamworth factory for export directly to the USA. But although this ambitious machine didn't have as much success as was hoped on the American market, with only 150 examples exported stateside, the ease in which the machine was manufactured gave the Reliant management the impetus to create the Sabre, an anglicised version which entered sales in 1961. The Sabre, while only selling 77 units during its two-year production run, was an able competitor to the contemporary Triumph TR4 in terms of performance, and with the ability for Reliant to produce a working sports model from conception to sales within the space of a year and without having to dig too deeply into the profits of their Regal three-wheeler, meant the management again took the sports car notion a step further through a concept based on the Ogle SX250 concept car. The SX250 itself was a one-off commission from Boris Forter, a director of the Helena Rubinstein Cosmetics Company, who asked David Ogle and his styling firm to create a personalised sports roadster based off the underpinnings of the Daimler SP250, and would be produced in such a manner that a limited assembly run of subsequent models could be built for Forter's friends and business partners. But before work had fully begun on the SX250, Ogle was killed in a traffic accident, when his mini-based SX1000 coupe crashed into a lorry while on his way to the Brands Hatch race circuit on May 25, 1962 leaving the work to be finalised by his business partner, John Ogier, and ex-Ford designer Tom Caron, who completed a running prototype in time for that year's Earl's Court Motor Show, with two SX250s built, one for Forter, the other for his mistress, Jean Hart. With the death of Ogle and a lack of sales incentive, the original intention to build six SX250s petered out, and thus, in 1963, Ogier approached Reliant as to the possibility of restarting production of the SX1000, but as creating this model required sourcing mini chassis and underpinnings from Austin, Reliant considered it more cost-effective and expedient to develop a model that was based on the existing mechanics of the Sabre, and therefore the SX250 was reworked to fit the Sabre's dimensions. The result was a deal struck between Ogle and Reliant, and following two years of development, converting the SX250 to the Sabre's underpinnings, the Reliant Scimitar GT was unveiled in 1964 at the Earl's Court Motor Show, continuing the naming convention based upon ancient Middle Eastern blades, the conversion of the SX250 to the Scimitar not being as easy as the company had hoped, as due to Ogle's GRP body panels being designed for a conventional chassis, Reliance Construction made more extensive use of glass fibre, while the previous use of the Daimler 2.5-litre V8 was replaced with a somewhat understated 2.5-litre Ford Zephyr inline 6. The Series 1 Scimitar cost £1,292, or £26,700 in 2022, which meant it was a competitive machine against the rival Triumph TR4, with 300 of these units being constructed during its first two years of production, and although these numbers paled in comparison to those being output by Triumph, for Reliant, as a smaller car firm, this was a significant success for the company, helping to support the enormous income being gathered from their range of economy cars and three-wheelers. 
With the continuing, though understated, popularity of the scimitar, modifications followed in 1966 with the replacement of the 2.5-litre Zephyr engine with a 2.9-litre Essex V6 producing 140 horsepower, while, in association with glass manufacturer Triplex, a one-off greenhouse-style laminated glass prototype was developed and put on display at the 1965 Earls Court Motor Show. The car, dubbed the Triplex Ogle GTS or Glazing Test Special, comprising 43 square feet of Sundium laminated safety glass, and was acquired by His Royal Highness Prince Philip, who used it as his own car. Although the GTS and its royal customer was a major incentive behind a possible production variant, the resultant machine saw much of the glazing cut down extensively, and the model was reworked to be a four-seater, the finalised 1967 concept being honed by Ogle designer Peter Bailey and rapidly translated into full-size mock-ups, with Reliance Managing Director Ray Wigan, Chief Engineer John Crosthwaite, and glass fibre body expert Ken Wood visiting Ogle's base in Letchworth to view the mock-ups before choosing a finalised design for full-scale production. With only a few minor cosmetic changes, the Scimitar GTE went from concept to production without any fundamental alterations, making its debut at the 1968 London Motor Show, while in terms of mechanics, the car illustrated a significant upgrade from the previous model. With a new chassis frame, revised and improved suspension, and an enlarged fuel tank in order to give it extended range suitable for the Grand Tourer market, while most importantly, full-sized rear seats and an opening glass tailgate were fitted, essentially creating a sports hatchback in a time when contemporary Grand Tourers and sports cars continued the convention of cramped boots and impractically small rear seats, if any at all. Complemented by the launch of an Ogle version of the car, the Reliance Scimitar GTE continued to be powered by 2.5 and 3-litre Ford Essex V6 engines, providing a top speed of 120 miles an hour and a 0-60 time of 8.5 seconds. Its mixture of lightweight glass fibre construction, competitive performance, simple mechanics carried over from contemporary family models, and a low cost, meaning it provided the perfect alternative for customers wishing to buy a GT car on a budget. Among the more famous owners of the Scimitar GTE was Her Royal Highness Princess Anne, daughter of Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh, who acquired her first example on loan from the Reliant Company in 1970 before buying one outright in November of the same year, later going on to purchase another eight examples through the 1970s and 1980s, as well as being reputedly pulled over by the police for speeding in one, her ventures outside the palace in her scimitars usually being done in the company of a bodyguard sitting in the passenger seat, while other famous scimitar owners included Bond actor George Lazenby, TV presenter Noel Edmonds, and Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent. With its successful launch, the GTE was evolved to suit the tastes of the changing fashions as the 1970s dawned, the first major changes coming in 1975 with a comprehensive upgrade to the styling and safety bumpers, and the expansion of the interior to make it more roomy, although such an upgrade incurred a higher retail price that pushed it closer to higher performance rivals such as the Lancia Beta and the Volvo P1800, and with it moving to meet a more demanding clientele, many of the car's minor but endemic design flaws had to be ironed out to suit this new market. In 1979, the Essex V6 was replaced by a 2.8-litre Ford Cologne power unit producing 160 horsepower, this new engine being used to try and reduce the effects of the increased weight introduced during the 1975 upgrade, while in 1980, and after a three-year development, the Reliance Scimitar GTC, also known as the SE8, was released, this car again being styled by Tom Caron and the Ogle styling firm and was a handsome variation of the original concept from 1968. The GTC, while intended to be a full-size convertible with a practically shaped boot, required the fitting of a T-bar cross-bracing arrangement on the roof to support the underfloor stiffening, with the added bonus of providing rollover protection for the occupants, with many contemporary car reviewers comparing the GTC favourably with the stylistic but ill-fated Triumph Stag of the previous decade. Sadly, despite the GTC seeing favourable reviews, the car struggled to find a home with customers, as with the collapse of the British sports car market during the 1970s, as the reputation for the entire category was tarnished by way of failures such as the Triumph TR7, the hot hatchback as a high-performance variant of practical family cars was now in vogue, and thus the Scimitar was seen more as a carryover from a bygone era rather than a viable alternative to the Volkswagen Golf GTI and the Peugeot 205. Therefore, only 442 GTCs were built between its 1980 launch and 1986 demise. The end of the GTC 
coinciding with the death of the entire Scimitar GTE range during the same year, as the popularity for these machines dropped away, 14,273 of these cars having been built during its 22-year production run. This wasn't completely the end of the Reliance Scimitar GTE though, as following the end of the original production run in 1986, the manufacturing rights were sold by Reliant to the Middlebridge Scimitar Company, which reintroduced a modified version of the car in 1987 with a 2.9-litre engine and a 5-speed transmission, the legacy of the original Scimitar being so strong that the fifth example of this new production run was once again purchased by longtime Scimitar enthusiast Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, her ninth and last Scimitar, while assembly of new GTEs under Middlebridge continued until 1989 when, after failing to sell in numbers that covered the somewhat unique assembly of these machines, the company folded after only 77 units had been built. To summarise, the Reliant Scimitar GT, GTE and GTC were among the most desirable sports cars of their era, even giving established giants like Triumph and Lotus a run for their money, but in the fullness of time have not appreciated in the same manner as their competitors, perhaps likely due to the stigma surrounding the Reliant mark and its association with the three-wheeled Regal, Robin and Rialto. Nevertheless, the original Scimitar of the 1960s is still a prized classic among those who are aware of it, and despite its original production run coming to an end in 1986, by the time of its demise, its striking moniker had been handed over to a new generation of Scimitar, one that would continue this formidable brand into the next decade.